you're out on the street and it's Christmassy and it's cold and we've got all the little sparkly lights on. We've got James standing here like a lemon because his girlfriend couldn't make it to the shoot, which is a bit of a shame. So you're all on your own, mate. Never mind. Yeah. Mikey loves. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. <coughs> when you're out on the street and it's Christmassy and it's dark and you've got the little sparkly lights, chances are you're going to want to take some pictures. The thing is, what happens? You get your camera out, it's on auto. The little flash pops up and you think, I'll get a lovely shot down the street with the lights and the shops and all that stuff. And we line it up here and we take the picture and we get something that looks like that. It's not very inspiring, is it? How about if I told you that it's really quite easy to get something that looks like this? I'll show you how to do it in a moment. First of all, I want to revisit that first image and explain what was happening. Why did it look like that? Why can my eyes see all these lights when the camera can't? When you press the shutter, well, sorry, when you put the flash on on auto, your camera will default to a 60th of a second shutter speed. Now that's quite fast. When you're in low light like this, it looks much brighter to us because our pupils get wider. But for the camera, it needs a very slow shutter speed. I reckon you're down to a one second exposure or something to photograph this with available light. So a 60th of a second gets rid of all that available light and the flash, which is very powerful, lights James. And it's a very harsh and unpleasant light. Therefore, all you can see are these little sparkly twinkly bits up in the sky. You can't see any detail in the street. So how did we do that with all the detail there? Well, first of all, you need one of these as always, because I love these, don't I? Get your tripod out and pop your camera on it. Now, if you watched our low-tech flash diffuser film, you might have got yourself one of these little film canister diffusers we were on about. You could use all sorts of things, but don't try using a business card because it won't work out here. Go and watch the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. Right, there we go, there's my little flash diffuser on there. That will just soften the light, it will shatter it a little bit. It's make no difference at all on the background, but it might soften the light on James. What are we gonna do? We're gonna take the shutter speed here from, you're gonna put it on manual to do this, pop your camera on manual, and take the shutter speed down, a long way down. Keep going down until your light meter says you're about two stops underexposed. Maybe a little more, I'm gonna to go to one stop underexposed in this kind of environment with a camera or a tripod. Now I'm gonna set up my shot again with James. It's a little bit high, I want it a bit lower. Here we go, focus on Mr. Bean here. It's cool, nice one James. Hold it still, here it comes. Look at that, what a difference. What a massive, massive, massive difference. Right, so what was happening? In that second shot, the shutter was open for a full third of a second. That's a very long time indeed. James wasn't moving, the camera wasn't moving, and the buildings weren't moving. So the shutter opened, light started coming up through the lens for a full third of a second, which is a long time, and recording on the sensor. Then just before the shutters closed, the flash fired, and the light from the flash lit up James. So therefore he's about the right colour, but we've still recorded all that detail in the background. But what if you haven't got your tripod with you? Well, it actually works. Let's just lose this over here and hope nobody nicks it. I don't think they will. We're in Winchester, they're nice people. Right. To do it handheld, I would speed it up a little bit. I would really stick with my minus two stops rule. So you've got to look at your light meter and you need to do this manually. And if you don't know how to expose manually, go and watch the manual exposure film. So let's line up our shot on Mr. James again. This time, to prove you I'm not cheating, I'm going to put him on the other side of the picture. Here we go, focused on James. Nice one, James, and here it comes. Perfect. James is beautifully sharp. We can see detail down the street, but look, those details in the street are actually a little bit soft. They're a bit fuzzy, and this is caused by camera shake. We had to have a slow shutter speed to capture the light that's in the street and that's got blur because of little movements when I press the shutter. James, however, is pin sharp, so why hasn't James got camera shake on him? It's because the flash burst happens incredibly quickly and it acts like a very fast shutter speed, even though we actually had a very slow shutter speed set on the camera. 
that is why we've got a bit of blur in the background. However, it is so much nicer than that first image with that horrible black background. But you can use that movement, that camera shake, this freezing of the flash and blurring of the time exposure to really great effect. Let's see if we can get something that gives the feeling of James on the move. So let's have a look. Right, there's a few people coming up the street. We've got a couple of police officers coming. We don't want to reverse into them. So, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. here we go. That's all right, there's nobody behind you. So, here we go, game on. James, if you start walking towards me fairly quickly now, here we go. Excellent. Perfect, 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 perfect. James is absolutely pin sharp. It's got a real sense of movement to it. The street's blurred, the passers-bys are a bit fuzzy. We can still see there's some lights going on and all the rest of it. This technique is called dragging the shutter. Now, there is no rule. I can't tell you, you must use this exposure or that exposure. You've got to experiment with it. I can do it fairly quickly because I've been doing it for years and years and years. Don't expect to rush out and get it right first time. Go and play with it. If you have one of these bad boys, the technique is exactly the same. But just remember that when you have the flash on top of your camera, like that, the diffuse is great, because this is really softening the light and sprinkling it out. But don't point it straight up in the air, because there's nothing to bounce off. The light will go carrying off to the moon somewhere, and you'll have a totally black picture. But let's have a little go at the same technique using a dedicated flash. So I've got my flash set about right, I've got my exposure still the same, there's no one behind us. Let's have another go at one of those movement things. You ready James? Yes. One, two, three, go! Excellent! Look at that, isn't that cool? That is much nicer than the one with the little on-camera flash. Because the little on-camera flash, even with my homemade flash diffuser, it's still very, very harsh. So let's have a quick recap. What happens? The shutter opens, the available light, these little twinkly lights and stuff going on down the street and passers by, they need a lot of time to record on the sensor. So they are going to blur no matter what happens. James, on the other hand, is being lit with flash, which happens in the tiniest, tiniest fraction of a second. So long as you have made sure that your light meter says you're about two stops underexposed, that's going to record the available light exposure. The camera shake won't affect James, it will only affect the environment, so you can get this beautiful, beautiful sense of movement. So now you know the building blocks of this, the structure of how it works, you can start to play with it a lot more. So James and I were moving together just now. What would happen if we had our tripod with James on it, going back to the first version of this shot, but there were crowds of people they're all swarming up the street here, loads and loads and loads of them. They're all kind of coming past like that and walking along. If James isn't moving, the buildings aren't moving, the lights aren't moving, the camera's on a tripod, so the camera's not moving, what's going to happen? Think about it. The pedestrians will move. So you've got James sort of lost in a dream amongst this crowd of people that are all flooding past on a Christmassy night. Very, very easy to do this. It really, really is. But it's not confined to linear motion. How about... I hope this works, because I'm kind of winging this one. Right, how about if we've got James here with all the lights, how about keeping your subject still, but having your camera moving quite seriously? What we're going to try and do is to get James, I'm going to make the lens a little wider. Here we go. Well done, James. How about if you press the shutter, the shutter opens, and you move yourself during the exposure? To do it, you've got to think, where is James? You've got to try and guess where to point the camera. This may or may not work. Ready, James? Mm -hmm. And here we go. Shut her down and move. Look at that. First one out the back. That's pretty cool. So now all the lights have kind of blurred across. You could not only do that, you could do downwards motion. You're right, mate? And here it goes. Like that. Twisting the camera like that. Look at that, we've got a rain of light coming down off those street lights, just falling in behind James. Very hit and miss, te hit and miss technique, which you do have to practice. This is the technique which I use to do my dancing shots at weddings and things. There you go, there's a little tip for you. You'll be trying it out on the bride and groom at the next one you go to. 
Anyway, it's cold, isn't it? So we're going to pack it in. This doesn't just work in the street. This will work in doors as well. So long as you haven't got a tiny little white room which will reflect too much light from the flash, if you have a bit of space or a darker room, you can also slow that shutter speed down a bit so that you pick up a bit of available light. Just remember, minus two stops, manual exposure, and it should work. Let's get back in the wall, mate. See you soon.